All right. Well, howdy, roofers, and welcome to the 2024 Digital Marketing Plan for Roofing Contractors. This is one of my favorite of all workshops that we do every single month, every single year. In this workshop, we're going to be talking about how to get your digital marketing on track here for 2024. We're also going to be doing a lot of hands-on type stuff, so be prepared for that. Uh, you will have some homework to do, and we're just going to go ahead and get started here. All right. So who am I? My name is Chris Hunter. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of RoofingSites.com. I'm also the author of The Ultimate Guide to Digital Marketing for Roofers. If you do not have this in your hands you, and you're a roofing company owner, you need this in your hands. I am also a member of the National Roofing Contractors Association, Roofing Contractors Association of Texas, PARCA, which is uh, the Houston Area Roofing Contractors Association. I have been doing search engine optimization since 1998. I've been building websites since then also. That really super dates me uh, back when the internet was still young and it wasn't on these you know $1,000 machines that sits in everybody's pocket. We actually had to you know, dial into the internet back at that at that time. So, you know, that super dates me, but I've been doing SEO and ranking websites for a super long time, building websites for a super long time. So uh, that is a lot about my background there. Rain in fact, I love to smoke Texas barbecue. In fact, I smoked, uh, you know, a, a really good work butt the other day that just turned out fantastic. My son was home from college and he had a couple of his buddies over and they just went to town on that thing. So if you are ever in College Station, Texas, where I am and you want some Texas barbecue, just give me some advance notice and uh, I will whip something up. Okay. I am on a mission to double the size of 100 roofing companies by 2028. Uh, we are well on our way on that. And the big part of what we are doing to help with that is what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. There's too many choices. That's the big problem these days. There's just way too many choices. You know, the early 2000s, when I went into business, uh, there were not as many choices. There weren't as many options for you to go and find roofing companies. You you just simply asked people, hey, who did you use? Who's who's your favorite roofer? Nowadays, they have this, this thing called the internet, and they have these $1,000 machines that are sitting in everybody's pockets, and that's how people are doing their research. And in fact, since COVID, consumer behavior has shifted dramatically, okay? And people are going more and more to those phones, to the internet, to their laptops, to their tablets, going to find roofers. And if you're not where they are looking, then you've got a major issue here. And additionally, the other problem is that since COVID, right, that drove a lot of people into owning their own roofing companies and starting their own roofing companies. Okay. So if you're an established roofing company owner, and you've noticed a huge drop off is simply because there's more competition out there. So what I say, what I tell all of our roofers that we work with is that you should be the choice versus a choice in your market. Okay. So we want to make sure that when everybody is looking for you, that you're the logical choice. Okay. Next is that most marketing focuses on tactics. They focus on either search engine optimization or pay-per-click on Google ads, or they, they maybe they start driving leads via Facebook. The problem is that if you are dependent on one specific platform and one specific tactic, then you've got a major issue with your marketing. It's very vulnerable. So what I teach all of my roofers is that we want to make sure that you are omnipresent in your market. And what that means is that you have to have a diversified marketing plan. And that's what we're going to work on today. All right. Now, I love machines. I worked on this machine in the Air Force in the late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. This is honestly where I figured out that I did not want to be on a 130 degree flight line working on a jet in the middle of summer. I would rather be in air conditioning working on someone's website. So that's when I shifted out of the Air Force, when I came out of the Air Force. So that's when I started my business. I like machines, right? And machines just plain work. Well, guess what? Your business and every business is simply a machine that is made up of a bunch of systems. Okay. 
So what we're going to talk about here today is a machine, a marketing machine that we're going to build for your company or that you should build for your company. And it's a machine because machines work for the most part, right? Until they stop working and then you fix it. And then again, it starts working again. So what is this machine? This is the 4R roofing marketing machine. It is made up of four pillars. You notice four pillars here. These four pillars are built so that if you do something right in each one of these pillars, you're going to have a comprehensive, diversified marketing system in place. Now, what are they? Well, the very basis of everything that you do is your reputation. If you do not have a solid reputation, whether that is not enough reviews or whether that is bad reviews, nothing that you do above this is actually going to work. Okay. None of the pillars are actually going to work unless you have, and, and what I have here is a high conversion website and online reviews. Okay. Those are the two pillars of what we work on for this reputation pillar. Reach, this is where all the tactics lie in marketing. Reach means simply getting in front of more people today than knew about you yesterday. Pretty simple, right? These are things like search engine optimization. Google Maps rankings, Google ads, Facebook ads, content marketing, social media, local service ads that, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Okay. And really the trick here with the reach pillar is to get one thing right and then work on the next one and then work on the next one, get that working right and get the next one working right and keep building on that success. To me, the very best place to be to put your business to where people are actually searching for you currently right now is on Google. Okay, 20 years ago, it was yellow pages. It was it was radio, it was TV, it was a uh, newspaper. Okay? Those things in your local market don't work anymore because again, they are on these $1000 machines, these iPhones, these Androids that are sitting in their pockets. I call this an evergreen system because as things stop working, we simply take them out. Okay, so again, that Yellow Pages example is a perfect example of that. The Yellow Pages no longer work. They haven't worked in, in probably 15, close to 20 years. They were starting to die as I was going into business. Okay, so that's the reach pillar. Next is resale. Most roofers don't get this right. In fact, we, did, we have done <laughs> hundreds, if not thousands of assessments on their marketing, okay, on roofing companies' marketing. None, not a single one of them have a monthly newsletter that goes out to their client base, right? That is the simplest thing that you could possibly do inside of this pillar is just to simply get a monthly newsletter running, okay? Using something like MailChimp or Constant Contact, okay? MailChimp is free up to a certain amount of users uh, that you have in your database. But the problem is that you have to come up with content that they're going to be interested in, okay? So, this is a very simple thing to do if you're doing what I recommend for search engine optimization, which is doing blogs on a, on a regular basis. The other things in this pillar, are database reactivation, these are cross-sell campaigns. These are, if you've done business with somebody before, doesn't it make sense to go back to them and cross-sell some one of your other services? So let's say that you're a roofer and you also offer gutters or you offer siding or you offer solar or doors or you know a, a multitude of, of things okay that you could easily cross sell with do this in this pillar and simply go back to that database of people just to simply let them know hey we've got solar now we're doing this with a client in the Miami area right now and they're getting some pretty good results with this and it is a low cost meaning that it only costs labor to do this it's a very low cost thing for them to do but it's a very high yield item for them. Okay. Because each, each solar job is what? $30,000. If you get one of those a week, that's a major chunk of money that you're going to have in you sitting in your pocket. Okay. So again, resell back to the people who have bought from you before. The next is referral. Referrals are gold. Referrals are the easiest sales of all. It's how most roofers, most business owners, when they first go into business, that's how they actually build their company. But yet the larger that you scale, the harder it is to actually implement and, and make sure that referrals are happening on a consistent basis. Okay. So what we did is that, is that we built some software to help with all of that, to simply add your past customers into this system. Again, it's about a system and it's about a machine. Okay. 
add those into your into your system and get those referrals on a regular basis and most importantly to incentivize those people okay now you notice we have social media in this pillar social media is something that to me is important because as people go and interact with you on social media if you're not posting on a regular basis there then it instills that you know the the thought in their mind that hmm these guys might not even be in business anymore right and that's especially important now after covid right 3 years ago it drove a lot of businesses out of business okay a lot of companies went out of business and so therefore you know if you haven't posted in the last year to 2 to 3 years the very first thing that goes through their mind is hey are they even in business anymore and honestly that goes back down to reputation right and so it all all of this system is as you notice here everything kind of interacts okay all right so this is the 4R roofing marketing machine. Now, this is the system. So let's get into the workbook here, okay? So the next step, go to this, go to roofingsites.com forward slash workbook and go ahead and download the workbook. I'm gonna pull it open here, okay? Use the QR code if you want to pull it open on your phone. If not, go to roofingsites.com forward slash workbook. This is an interactive workshop here today. And what you're going to do is you're going to get this workbook right here, okay? And in it are a few links, all right? We've got the overview of the 4R marketing system, and we've got four links to some downloads, some worksheets that we're going to work through, all right? First one that I want you to open up, uh, well, go ahead and let's go ahead and open up each one of these here. Let's go to the first one here, the marketing budget worksheet, okay? And what you're going to want to do with this when you do get it is to copy it over to your own Google Drive. So in order to do that, if it doesn't have a little make a copy button, as soon as you click on that, click on uh, go to file and then make a copy and, and copy that over into your Google Drive folder. OK, next, let's look at the marketing traction organizer. Go back to this and let's click on that. And this is really where I want to start with. OK. All right. So what is this? This is uh, straight out of uh, something called Entrepreneur's Operating System. Is that software for your computer? No. Entrepreneur's Operating System, EOS, is a way to structure your business. Okay, It is an operating system for your business, meaning that it has a framework, just like the 4R framework, except this is for your overall business. Okay, So Marketing Traction Organizer is a very small part of that. And in it, has some very important things. So go ahead and go into that one as well and hit file and make a copy and copy that over to your own Google Drive. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to actually edit this. So the very first thing that we want to do is that we want to put our date in, all right? Because we want to make sure that we have our date set in that so that when we look back at, at, at this every single quarter, every single year, right? As we look back at this, we know when we actually put our goals down. Next step, big, hairy, audacious goal, BHAG, right? This is where do you want to be? Where do you want to be in five years, 10 years? Are you looking to scale your company and sell it? Maybe you want to look for an exit in five to 10 years. Okay, put that down here. I want to exit my company in five to 10 years. If, however, you want to you know, build your company up big enough to hand down to your sons, daughters, whatever, right? Put that in here. This is where I want to be in five to 10 years. This could be a monetary goal. In fact, we want to make it a little bit of that. Okay. My BHAG, just so you know, I, I, I said it at the very beginning is that I want to help a hundred roofing companies double in size before 2028. Okay. Our entire company makes every decision based off of that one big, hairy, audacious goal. Everything that we do is driven by that. So this is where your moonshot is, right? This is where you want to put in your big, hairy, audacious goal. The next thing as you're looking at this, and you might be looking at this later, okay? Pause here. If you are looking on, at this on YouTube later, right? As a replay, pause here. And, and I'm, I want to make a, a big note that please go through this with your leadership team, meaning that if you have an operations manager, if you have in EOS terms, an integrator, you have someone that is in charge of sales and marketing, if you have someone that's charge of operations, if you have someone that's charge of, you know, finance and admin, sit down with these people to go through this as an exercise. All right. So next, let's look at our three-year picture. 
I'd like to put the future date of three years out at just starting at December 31st. And actually, you know what, to make this more, make more sense, I'm going to actually, I gave y'all an example. We have an example here of Acme Roofing, okay, of this entire worksheet. Okay, so date, we put in here in December 2nd, 2023. I should probably put in today's date, 22nd, December 22nd. BHAG, right, their BHAG was 2,000 roof replacements per year by December 31st, 2028. That's their big moonshot. That's, that's their big, hairy, audacious goal. They want to 10x their, their current company size to $30 million. Three-year picture, put in the future date, revenue of where they want to be in three years in order to achieve this big, hairy, audacious goal of $30 million. Okay, Profit lo- levels, right? This is an important one because we all go into business right, to create freedom. That is money freedom, time freedom, relationship freedom. All of that is combined, but right here is the most important part of being in business is to make sure that you are making a profit. So if you have a net profit after everyone has been paid, including yourself, of $3 million, that's great. Okay. Measurables on that, we put down 1,000 roof replacements. Okay. In order to achieve that goal of $15 million, because their average is $15,000 per roof. Okay. So in order to do that, in order to achieve that, they decided, okay, in their goals, and, and let's make a, a real quick stop here. On the goals, you want no more than three to five. And in my experience, if, if you have more than three to five, you're not going to achieve those things. Okay. So let's, let's put in here on your goals, keep it down to three to five goals. In order for them to achieve this, this $3 million, they put in, they wanted locations in every major metro area in Texas. They want to identify, they would need to identify and purchase four roofing companies in that time because sometimes growth happens when you buy other, purchase other companies. Doing this, you know, on a steady basis, identifying on a regular basis is something that they wanted to do. This is a fictional company, by the way, Acme Roofing. They wanted to generate 4,000 leads. They needed to achieve that because of their current uh, sales ratio. 4,000 leads in order to achieve the above here of 1,000 roof replacements. That's easy math, 25% closing rate off of every lead that comes into their business. Okay. They have their sales dialed in. Number four, hire a CEO to replace Bob. Bob, the fictional uh, CEO currently right now, the, the roofing company owner. Okay. He wants to be replaced by that point in three years. And I, I believe that that is fully, fully doable. Okay. To be an owner and not a CEO of the company. Okay, so in the in the next step here, the one year plan, uh, all right, we just simply added in the date twelve thirty one twenty twenty four. That is this year, by the way, or depending on when you when you're watching this. Right now, we're in, we're in twenty twenty three, but if you're watching this in twenty twenty four, that's the end of of twenty twenty four, right? Annual revenue, we put down six million dollars. Okay, profit of twenty percent, which uh, on that based off of that is one point two million, and measurables of four hundred roof replacements. Okay, for that at fifteen thousand dollars per roof. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, what did they have to do in order to achieve this four hundred roof replacements from where they are currently right now? Well, they would have to open a location in the DFW area. They are here in the Bryan College Station area, right? They would have to expand up into the Dallas Fort Worth area. That's what they wanted to do. Okay, next number two, identify and purchase one roofing company in this year. Okay, in order for them to double the size of their company. Number three, generate 1,600 leads. Number four, elevate Joseph, right, which is their operations guy, their manager, to a COO level, right, the integrator level. Number five, fully implement operating uh, entrepreneur's operating system, EOS. Number six, fully implement the 4R roofing marketing system, right? Every single company should be implementing the system that I'm laying out here in the book. Every single one of y'all should be doing that. Quarterly rocks. What are rocks? Rocks are the big projects that you need to accomplish in order to push you forward towards these goals right here. Okay. So if you notice, I'm working backwards on all of this. I'm working from the big, hairy, audacious goal to the three year picture to the one year plan now to a quarterly rock. The rocks are your big projects. Okay. This came straight out of Vern Harnish's uh, book, The Rockefeller Habits and rocks. Are important and, and the Rockefellers knew this is that they needed to work in 12 week sprints, which is basically, you know, 90 day sprints, right? 12 week sprints in order to 
achieve their big goals for the year. So for, for this company, right, in order to achieve all of this, they needed to research a roofing company in Dallas-Fort Worth in order to buy that company. They got to research some. They have to contact them. Number two, redesign their website. Their website was horrible, needed to redesign it. Number three, start search engine optimization campaigns because guess what? Search engine optimization takes a long time. That is the long-term goal for your marketing. So they needed, they knew that, and we had coached them that they needed to start this right now in order to, to get leads in and start planting that seed now in order to, to harvest right, those leads in six months. It's a hard, hard thing to stomach for a lot of roofing companies, but you've got to do that if, if you want leads that are affordable. Number four, they need to generate 32 leads this quarter, right? That's do- doable, okay, in order to get their eight roof replacements. Number five, start Google Ads campaigns. Number six, fix reputation, right? They, they needed to get some more reviews in so that they could fix the bottom pillar of the 4 hour marketing system. Number seven, implement the first stage of EOS, which is getting the right person in the right seat, setting their vision, and getting into a regular meeting rhythm with all of their employees. This is an example. You can use this as an example. I want you to go back with your leadership team. Okay, later today, this year, beginning of this year, whenever, set aside a day and work on the business with with the people who are most important to the business. Okay, this could be if you're a solo entrepreneur, right? This might be your wife, all right? If you have an operations manager, if you have someone and that's your only other person in the entire business, sit down and do this with them. If it's a business partner, do that with them, okay? If it's you, sit down and write down your goals because as you add people, you want to share this with them, okay? You want to share this marketing traction organizer with them. You want to share your vision, your core values. All of those things need to be shared with every single person in your organization. All right, we've done the marketing traction organizer, right? Let's go and let's talk about our marketing budget now. Okay, if we know where we want to go, if we know that, you know, we we need to be at $6 million in annual revenue this year, let's put this into the marketing budget worksheet. Okay, if our target is $6 million, that's 60. Then our monthly revenue target, this automatically calculates that. If we want to get to $6 million, we need to be hitting $500,000 every month. Okay. And that's based off of a few other items. Let's change out our average job value. In the case of this roofing company owner, Acme Roofing is, was $15,000 per job. Average conversion rate, we identified that as 25%. So these are the numbers, six million, fifteen thousand. Right. So each, each month we've got to hit 33 jobs. Make sense? Number of leads that we need to get per month in order to hit that target is 133 leads. That's totally doable for any roofing company. Okay. We're not going to talk about the how on that just yet, but just know that that's what they would have to do in order to achieve six million dollars. If your numbers are a little bit different, if you're a million, if you're two million, right? Then put those numbers in here, put your average job value, put your closing rate for cold leads coming in from the internet. Okay. That's the hard part. These are, don't put your conversion rate here for referral leads. Okay. Cause we're going to start doing some internet marketing. Internet leads have to be treated way different than referral leads. Okay. Or people coming back to you that have used you before. All right. So. Average cost per generating lead here, we've got $95, okay? And there's a note on here, right? These are the average, varies by market, of course. It varies by how good that your marketing is, but what we see is the average is around $95 per lead, okay? Budget needed in order to hit that target is $12,667 per month that they would need to spend in ads alone, just ads alone if they wanted to do that, okay? That's a lot of money, right? But when you're making $6 million, or let's say that you're going from 3 million to 6 million, right? That's the money that you would need to invest in ads alone if that was your sole source of leads. Now, if you know that your leads are, let's say, $200 per lead, put that in here. Okay. So that would give us 26,000 that we would need to spend. Make sense so far here? Each of these numbers, put in, put in your numbers. 
Oh, and by the way, I didn't. I know I said this earlier, but make sure you make a copy of this. Go to file, make a copy because you won't be able to edit any of this stuff. Make a copy into your own Google Drive folder. Okay. All right. Let's move over to our budget allocations. Okay. So let's let's take this number back again, based off of this company. We're gonna put their numbers in. I need one more number here. I think one more zero. Six million dollars. Okay. Their mar marketing budget percent. This is completely up to how aggressive that you want to be. If you want to be aggressive and double the size of your company, the National Roofing Contractors Association gives us a number of anywhere in between 5 to 10% of your total revenue to be allocated just towards marketing. So if we're at a million right now, we want to get to 2 million, we would, we would want to think about, okay, with that $2 million, let's take 5% on the low end of that $2 million and put that in here. Okay. In this case, 6 million. And all I have to do is put in 5% here. And this will adjust some of these numbers here for us. Total marketing budget, right, for the year would be $300,000. Average monthly budget should be 25,000. Next, let's determine how we want to allocate that entire budget. So a lot of companies have certain things like trucks and wraps for those trucks. They have signs that go out in the yards. They have all sorts of things in the industry that you can use in order to market yourself. Okay. So in this section here, we're going to say, okay, well, we're going to break up how we're going to do this. Okay. What I recommend is that we take 70% of your total budget and allocate that towards your online marketing. 25% should be allocated to offline marketing. This, these are things like, like I said, your trucks, your wraps, your signs, your shirts for your staff. Okay. I walked by a job site the other day. I was out on my, my exercise walk and one of the bigger companies in the Bryan College Station area here, right? They, and it was, this was a Saturday. This was at a business, right? Just near my, near my house where I was walking by. I noticed that not a single one of their trucks were wrapped. They didn't have a sign on any of their trucks. They didn't have their staff in any kind of uniform whatsoever. I mean, they were just all over the place on uniforms. The only reason I knew that this company was, was out there was because they had put a sign out in front of that business. That was it. My recommendation, make sure your staff, even if they're subs, make sure they wear your shirts, right? T-shirts cost, what, $10, $15? Go get some sh shirts that they'd be proud to wear. Okay. If you're here in Texas, you're going to want dry fit shirts. Okay. If you're up north, make sure that they have, you know, and it's, and it's, you know, in the colder season, make sure that they have something that's a little bit more long sleeve or something like that. Okay. But anyways, that what, what I'm going at here is make sure that you do have an allocation for the year, for your budget for the year, right? For that offline marketing, make a plan now for that. Next. Allocate to repeat business. Repeat business is great, okay? And not just repeat business, but for referral business is what I'm talking about here. Let's build a plan for that. Let's say, okay, we're going to take 5% of that $300,000 and we're going to allocate that. And by the way, the numbers are right over here. This is all calculated out based off of your percentages that you put in here. But if that 5% 5 per, 5 you're going to say, okay, we're, we're going to allocate that for referrals. Right. I recommend a $250 gift card to the person that referred business to you to somewhere like Texas Roadhouse if you've got them around you. Okay. I think in the DC area, there's not very many Texas Roadhouses up there. I'm sorry for that. Y'all definitely need way more of those. But I know that give them, find a gift card, some sort of a gift card to go to a local restaurant or some sort of restaurant that they would be proud to take their family to. Okay, two hundred fifty dollars will feed a family of four at pretty much any any restaurant. That incentivizes your staff. Do it for your staff. It incentivizes your past customers, and it incentivizes any referral sources. Okay, it's okay to send out a, a gift card, right, to pretty much anybody. So let's do that. Let's build that into our plan. So in this case, for them, we would allocate starting at the top online marketing two hundred ten thousand of that three hundred thousand. 75,000 total, right? For offline marketing. And again, these are wraps, these are signs, these are shirts. This could be postcards. Repeat business 15,000 for the full year. Everybody with me so far? Oh, and make sure you change in the date of the year. 
to 2024. All right. Getting thumbs up. Cool. All right. So next, let's come jump down here. Online marketing, offline marketing, and repeat business. Okay. All we need to do here is determine, okay, well, what percentage per month, right? Because we've got January through December here. What percentage are we going to spend per month? Here's my general rule of thumb is that during the slow times, we put a little bit more gas on the fire. Okay. During, during busy times, we don't have to market as much because people are seeing our signs. People are seeing our trucks. People are seeing us out and about. SEO is kicked in, right? Hopefully by that time at this point, you know, during your busy season, maybe you spend a little bit less during the busy season. Then you kick it back up. And that's kind of what we did here, right? So 10% for this company, January through May, June, we went down to 5%. 5%, 8%, 8.33, and so forth, right? We just simply went through and allocated. When they started slowing down, we're going to spend more on marketing because we need people to get to know, like, and trust us. And they can't know, like, and trust us if they don't know you exist. So you have to spend money on marketing. You have to invest in marketing during those times. Offline marketing. Well, these are, again, these are those wraps. These are those trucks. This can stay consistent throughout the rest, throughout the year. Okay. We might not necessarily need to spend this amount of money every single month. We might do this at the beginning of the year. During our slow time, we might be working on this. Okay. Let's make sure that we have shirts. Let's make sure that we have uh, wraps on our trucks, or at least at the very minimum, magnets that your subs can put onto their trucks. Let's make sure that they have those marketing tools in place at the beginning of the year. So anyways, my point here is that you don't necessarily need to spend 6,200 per month. Okay. We just kept this all even grand total of 75,000 for offline marketing. Okay. Repeat business. Again, this is as business comes in, as people start referring, we're going to spend that per job. Now I'm going to make a note here on the repeat business side of things that can definitely go up. <laughs> that budget can definitely go up because as people refer business to you, you're just taking a portion of the, the fees that you're getting for the, for the house and $250 per gift card that you send out is a very small drop in the bucket uh, in the grand scheme of things. All of these, right? We want to make sure that we put it in here. Online marketing allocation, okay? Grand total of 210000 from up here. How are we going to allocate that? Here's what I recommend. SEO, good chunk, right? Pay for someone to do this stuff. Don't do it yourself because you need to be selling, <laughs> okay? You need to be out there selling. If you are a solopreneur, if you have a sales team, then hire someone that knows what the heck they're doing because SEO is its a moving target. Google changes 650 times a year. Do you have time to keep up with that as, as a business owner? I don't think so, right? So make sure that you pay for someone to do this, whether that's in-house or, or someone like us that, that is outsourced. Pay-per-click, LSAs, okay? What are LSAs? Local service ads. These are driving a lot of business right now. Make sure that you have your Google guaranteed ads. That's what local service ads are. Make sure that you have those running at all times. Okay. Again, during slow times, we're going to kick in more. During busy times, we're going to, we're going to draw back from that. Cool thing about LSAs is that you can do that on a weekly basis. You can turn those up if you need to, if you're not getting enough leads in for your salespeople, right? That's when you can kick those things in. We're seeing a lot of repeat business or sorry, a lot of calls, a lot of forms being filled out, a lot of leads coming in from the local service ads. Google is placing more and more emphasis on that platform itself because it's making them way more money. And more importantly, it's more beneficial to the businesses that are doing that. Okay. Pay-per-click, you want to make sure that you have a, a budget set aside for that. Okay. This can go up and down. This is wildly variant depending on the business. I, I recommend at least, depending on how competitive that your market is, at least a thousand dollar budget per month on pay per click and LSAs minimum. Display and retargeting. These are when people come to your website, those ads follow them around. Okay, this goes into the resell pillar on the four R marketing machine. Make sure that you have something set aside for your for your display and retargeting ads. Make sure that your ads are showing up on not only Facebook and Instagram, but they're showing up on CNN. They're showing up on ESPN's website. They're showing up on every single website out there that people go to consume content has the Google AdSense platform built into it. 
So make sure that you have a plan for that. Okay. Build the budget in right here. Okay. So if we say 35%, 55%, 5%, then that puts it at 73,000 for SEO, 115 for pay per click, and 10,000 for retargeting ads. Next, again, we're going to allocate differences between each of these. Again, we might want to put in 10%, right? In the busy season or the slow seasons, if you're up north, that might be all the way through April. Okay. Here in Texas, busy season starts in April. Okay. So maybe we put 5%, you know, for each of the busy months. August here in Texas, it starts slowing down because it ain't raining. Right. So we want to make sure that it's higher here. Play around with these numbers, you know, adjust every single month. Look at this. Is my plan working? Is it not working? Right. What do I need to adjust on this? Make sure that you have a plan, that you work the plan, that you're adjusting the plan every single month, every single quarter, every single end of the year. This is a perfect time of the year to sit back and look at 2023 and go, did it work? Okay. Did, did I achieve my goal of where I wanted to be at the beginning of the year? You know, right now, am I there? If not, then start looking back and figuring out, okay, what, what do I need to do? What, what didn't work? What did work? Let's do more of what did work and less of what didn't work. Put into plan all of these things to achieve your goals. And again, that's back here at that marketing traction organizer. That's why I started with that. Okay. Is that we want to make sure that we put our goals out there first and then we budget for those goals. Okay. We have a couple of other things here average cost per lead by source. These are just averages of what we see in the industry. These, of course, go up and down depending on how competitive that your market is. What quarter is it could also influence that, right? Because quarter four, we saw ad cost per clicks go way up because guess what is happening in quarter four? Everybody and their dog is advertising. I mean, we saw it ourselves with our own advertising that we're doing on Facebook. We saw our, our cost per acquisition per lead go way up, at least double. Okay. So have a plan for that. Ad budget. This is another thing that I like to do is uh, go through here and, and put in all your numbers. The green ones, it's just the opposite on this one. Figure out what your current cost per acquisition is, your ideal, your best cost per acquisition, right? And your conversions. Put in where you want to be from here till the next couple of years, right? This is simply a Google Ads budget calculation machine here, okay? So just simply put in the numbers on the green ones on this sheet. Make sense. And by the way, the total marketing budget here, these are just numbers that are given to us by the National Roofer Contractors Association, NRCA, five, eight, and 10%. Five being low, you know, and again, this is your overall budget. Five being less aggressive on how you want to grow, 10 being 10% being higher on the what you want to reinvest, okay, into your marketing. So, just plug your numbers in there, play around with it. Again, come back to this every every single quarter, every single month, every single week if you want to. You as the business owner, that's your job. All right, this is one of my favorite ones. We're getting up here pretty pretty quickly. So if we click on the digital marketing checklist, this is exactly what we use, right? In order to assess, by the way, we used to use the word audit. <laughs> Y'all roofers don't like the word audit. I get it. So we we changed this. This is an assessment. Okay. So this is real easy. Each check, there's a checkbox for each of these questions. Go through this. Okay. And this is all based off of the 4R marketing system. What we know currently works to drive leads into your business right now. Okay. For instance, on your website, do you have the phone number in the upper right hand corner of every page? Are you using authentic images, your, your pictures, not stock photography? Are you showing pictures of you, your staff, your trucks? Heck, you and your wife, you and your kids, right? Make sure that it's personalized, that your website is personalized to you. Do you have a compelling call to action button after every block of text, right? Simply go through this checklist, right? There's a lot of them here. There's about 80 items that we go through for our um, incoming clients and we check them on a regular basis. Make sure that we are doing what we say that we, we know need to happen. Over here on the results tab, this will give you a score of how you scored over here. Then. Simply go through and prioritize what do I need to work on this year, this quarter, this month. There's also, by the way, a resources tab over here that has all sorts of really cool resources. Okay. If you need to know 
what the tools are, the current tools are for search engine optimization, the ones that are commonly used, SEM Rush, Majestic, Google My Business, Moz Local, Site Supercharger, that's ours. Okay. If you need to know, you know, what to use for graphic design, it's, it's in here. I highly recommend Canva. If you're not using Canva, that is one of the underutilized tools in all of marketing. I use it. My staff uses it on a daily basis. It's one of the cheapest and easiest tools to use to make your brand consistent. MailChimp is a newsletter platform. Highly recommend every single roofer go out and, and set their upload your database, right? into MailChimp. If you're not doing that right now, send a monthly newsletter. Facebook ads, here's a link to that. BirdEye is a reputation tool to help you get reviews in for your business. We also have something that we've built here called the Reputation Machine that you can use as well. Buffer, there's all sorts of cool things in here, right? Go back to this, this back tab called resources here um, and look at it. Next year, we'll probably have a whole different mix of things. Like I don't even have chat GPT in here. And us and our staff use it on a daily basis, right? So that's definitely uh, something that every business should have in place. Go ahead, Russ. I was going to say the one question that I would have is like, looking from a perspective of like a roofer, it seems like a lot to do, right? And it seems a like a lot do. of time, right? So yeah. if I don't want to do it, what would be the best way for me to get, like direct someone on how to do this or hire someone how to do this? Absolutely. And I'll, I'll address that here in a second. The big part that I want you to take away from this is plan for the year. Use all of the tools that I just gave you inside of the worksheet there, the download to plan out your year. Sit with you and your leadership team. Sit down with them. This is the time of year to do it, right? Especially if you're up north, you're slow as all get out probably, right? Sit down, make a plan for next year. What are, how, how are we going to achieve our goals? Set your goals, make the plan to achieve the goals. The 4-Hour Roofing Marketing Machine, implement this. This should be part of your goal for the year. If you don't have this fully implemented in your business already, make sure that you do implement this. Okay, so the steps. Number one, fix your reputation. This is for the to implement the ultimate marketing machine. The 4-Hour Marketing Machine into your business, fix your reputation. Reach more people today than yesterday. Resell to past customers and get referrals. It's that simple four steps. If you don't have my book in your hands, use this QR code to download it or go to go.roofingsize.com. If you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes at this point, go.roofingsites.com. I will give you my book, The Ultimate Guide to Digital Marketing for Roofers for free. All right. As a download, as a thank you for listening to this podcast. Questions? How do you hire us? How do you how do you implement all of this stuff in your business? Well, start there. Go to go.roofingsites.com or just go to roofingsites.com forward slash schedule, right? Or just go to roofingsites.com. There's a big, huge red button in the upper right-hand corner that you can actually build a plan with me. I will help you build a plan, okay? And help you implement that. So just simply go to roofingsites.com, click on the big red button, and schedule a meeting with, with me to build the plan for 2024. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today to build out the plan. Now, take massive action. Okay. Take massive, massive action for 2024. Sit down, build the plan, work the plan. That's that simple. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all's time. Appreciate you coming and showing up to the workshop here. And our next workshop will be sometime in January. I appreciate y'all very much. Thank y'all so much.